Hello folks and welcome back. This is an upload that I did for Ghost Skills last week. It's a webinar and Ghost Skills have kindly allowed me to upload it here on the channel. It talks all about making remote work a default in your daily life. So everything from how to set up your desk and make a productive environment, all the way to producing healthy routines when you're working from home. So hopefully this is useful for those remote workers out there. And a huge thanks to Go Skills for allowing me to upload it here on the channel. You can check out Go Skills below. Um, I actually have a course there about essential productivity training. It was done a few years ago, but still definitely relevant and useful, and I think you'll enjoy it. So do check out all of the links in the description below. Folks, I hope you enjoyed this one, and feel free to leave any questions in the comments below. Thank you. All right, hey everyone. Thanks for joining us. We're going to start up our session now on managing your new working from home lifestyle effectively. We have Francesco uh, D'Alessio joining us. Let me kind of walk through our script here. My name is Dan Gorgone and I'm a course producer here at GoSkills. Um, and Francesco is, is uh, the host and creator of Keep Productive, a YouTube channel that's dedicated to helping people find the most suitable productivity tools for their life and work. And uh, if you want to learn more, uh, you can visit keepproductive.com. Um, but Francesco's also created a couple of courses for us here at GoSkills, including the Essential Productivity Training Course. And I can't help but think that there's a lot of overlap between that course and today's webinar, right? Because all of us here have been struggling with the challenge of remaining productive while working from home, which we all are, I am here. Um, during these past few months and maybe into the future as well. So I know I can't wait to hear what Francesco has to say about that. No pressure, Francesco. Um, <laughs> but before we begin, just a couple housekeeping details. This session is being recorded. So if you miss anything or you want to share this session with someone you know, you'll find it on our YouTube channel later today. You can find our channel, uh, search for goskills.com on YouTube and you'll find our channel there. Uh, at the end of the presentation, we'll have time for Q&A, so if you have any questions, type them into the chat at any time, and we'll collect everything and let Francesco have a chance to go through them at the end. Um, again, we'd love to know where you're watching from, so jump into chat and let us know uh, where you are. Um, I'm going to see, oh, how many, we've got uh, uh, Trini from New York City, uh, Fatima from India, thank you for joining us. Um, we'd love to hear from, from everyone and find out where you're, where you're watching from. But, um, if this is your first time on a ghost skills webinar, we thank you. Uh, and, uh, you can check out more on ghost skills at ghostskills.com. But for now, let's get to the webinar and learn how to manage our work from home lifestyle effectively with Francesco D'Alessio. Francesco, thank you for joining us today. Oh, what a lovely introduction, Dan. Thank you. Cheers. Um, thank you, uh, you guys, uh, for having me here. Uh, I'm excited today to be diving into uh, managing uh, the new lifestyle that you may be having uh, from home. Um, I'm talking a lot about how um, I guess you can be as effective as possible with it. Um, and it, it's not the most easy uh, time at the moment because uh, it's so uncertain, and some people have uh, not just been thrown into this new sort of uh, environment, but they've been thrown in it fast. Um, and it, that, that's like really daunting. Um, I'm someone that's been working at home for, well, I haven't really known anything else apart from uh, one year where I worked uh, in a company and it was actually on, on site. But aside from that, I've, I've worked the majority of my time at home. Um, and during that time, I picked up some useful tips. Um, so during this pandemic, um, not actually much has changed for me, but um, it can be really scary and really, uh, you know, so new for so many people. So hopefully um, we can get some of your answer, uh, questions answered by the end of today's webinar. Um, and we can also help you to um, navigate it a little bit easier. So we're going to start um, uh, by welcoming you all. So feel free to introduce yourselves and and leave any questions you have, whatever um, slide we're on, if it's a specific one, the more specific, the better. 
Um, so feel free to leave them in the chat. So yeah, uh, as Dan mentioned, uh, my name is Francesco D'Alessio um, and I've been, uh, as Dan mentioned, uh, uh, like interested in productivity software and I've been interested since a very weird age of 15 and it's sort of grown since. So the courses that we have on GoSkills are, are, are mainly about tools, but also about productivity training. So uh, do check them out and I think you'll find them uh, super interesting. So uh, the this sort of webinar is a little bit of a different one to say working from home um, in the shorter period. It's, it's talking about long-term sustainable working at home. And I've clipped these two articles here, um, one that was from Facebook, who are now uh, expecting half of their workforce to work remotely over the next five uh, to 10 years, and also Twitter and Square announcing that um, and these are just two big companies and of many more that are starting to realize that um, working from home could potentially be a reality, uh, but not only a reality, but an option for most of their employees. And we're seeing that growing number of, of companies do this. So I'm going to go through, I think, three or four different sections, different aspects of working from home that, um, that hopefully will be just key bits that you can change, you can tweak if you're working from home right now and stuff that you can actually, um, you know, jump into tomorrow. Um, well, it's it's a bit late here if I was, say, do a few tweaks, but say in the morning, uh, if you're working in the, in the UK, that is, or, or anywhere in Europe. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is the workspace. Uh, it's the desk in front of you. It's the, it's the, the toolkit around you. And this is important because it is going to be the base that you place yourself at uh, every single day. And especially with a lot of folks, um, they would have been thrown in the deep end. Um, I was talking to my sister the other day who was starting to work from home and she had to use a picnic chair <laughs> uh, and a picnic table uh, in her front room. Um, and it was definitely just you know, uh, makeshift environments, um, a very fast thinking um, situation, which has never really happened. You normally get a bit of time to plan this sort of stuff out. Um, so what you need to have a look at, why this is really important is, is a, a space to focus, but also reflect on what needs you have. So let's talk about the environment. So as I said, the environment is really important. And the majority of the time, it's really important to have uh, a clear clutter-free environment. Um, and the reason I say that is because um, unless you're, say, an artist or <laughs> someone that's very creatively driven and uh, is open to and has worked really well in the past with very cluttered environments, clear and clutter-free is normally the go-to. And it's something that um, should be aimed for um, with each uh, setup that you have. And the second thing there is, is trying to keep your workspace as separate as possible from other things. And I'm actually finding that dilemma myself, um, working from home. We've just had a new baby. And as you can see behind me, uh, I'm in the baby's room, but also my office. There's a slight divide in the middle <laughs> of what differentiates that. Um, but I do still have a nice working environment. It's only calls that really disrupt um, anything, uh, I guess, to some extent, it being in the background. So making sure it's as separate as possible um, is the best thing. And I, I'll explain later about when I was in a flat um, and we didn't have the luxury of having a, a second bedroom um, or a second room where you can work in. Um, and that can sometimes be a bit daunting, but you can work around that. And that's what I want to explain today. So a lot of the time, the goal is normally feels like this, uh, very clutter-free, you know, the cup's the only thing on the table, Where, whereas in reality, it's probably going to be something like this, uh, or <laughs> getting closer to this, maybe this is a bit too messy, um, but you can see the sort of concept. Um, it's trying to get a nice balance, um, but also making it clutter-free. So the best way to approach this, um, and some of the tips that I found, um, is firstly to determine its use. Um, this, for example, the desk area that I've got here is very much contained in its own environment. There isn't anything uh, overlapping it. Um, for example, I keep this 
quite strictly this area to uh, working uh, for an, like myself and and working on uh, certain things. Um, I have a nice little sort of pegboard up here with all my stuff and my drawers uh, are useful and accessible so I can access work stuff. Um, the second thing is bringing it away from the noise. Um, Otto, our little one, is not actually going to be in this room in, for a couple of months at least. Um, and and neither um, when I'm trying to work, he's normally downstairs. So it, it, I guess it's away from the noise at the moment. But as, if you can bring it away from the noise as possible, um, especially if you've got kids running the house, uh, around the house or um, people coming in and out, um, you know, maybe not at this moment, but uh, trying to keep it away from the noise best you can is um, a really good thing to do because you got to try and separate it as best you can. Um, and then also three, um, you know, working from home isn't going to be something that you want to be boring. You don't necessarily want it to be um, like a clinical environment. Um, you know, when you're working in an office, you may have had pictures of family members on your desk, or you may have had, you know, um, a pack of gum or a pot of gum next to you. You can still make it your own. And if you your company has given you a, a kind budget for a working from home environment, then that's something that you can play around with, make it a little bit more of your own. But even if they haven't, there's still ways to improve it and to enhance it. And maybe later we can talk about uh, the benefits of standing desks, of um, other stuff like that that can improve your workspace. The second aspect of workspaces is, you know, what I talked about, low budget, um, is actually you not actually having to pay out uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds on uh, new equipment. Um, it's it's got to be low budget to start out with because, um, you know, you want to build it up as time goes on. So you need to look at sort of key features, um, making sure that the, the budget isn't broken um, and that it, uh, you know, always sort of retains um, its use. And this is uh, one of my workstations as I started out um, doing uh, for, uh, working from home. And you can see here that it is fairly simple. Um, I've got uh, an Ikea lamp. Um, I've got, I had a standing desk, um, which was a reasonably priced standing desk. I had an Amazon Basics um, lever for the back of the computer. And uh, the Alexa was just something that we owned anyway. <laughs> um, and it was a fairly clutter-free environment. It wasn't uh, completely clutter-free. It was a nice balance, I think. Um, and that was actually, uh, maybe I'll allude to this later, but that actually was in the corner of our flat. Um, and it was on and next to the TV. Um, so it was trying to strike that balance. But I did move it around the room. Um, I think here's a picture, I've tried to crop myself out <laughs> of it on the other side of the room. So I, I, I slowly migrated to the other side of the room and uh, I was able to um, actually make it more of a um, away from the TV um, in a bit of a lighter part of the room as well. And it is about iterations, I think, with workspaces. And I improved the, uh, the, the laptop stand um, and I think, yeah, the laptop also improved, <laughs> but that was a, a gradual one. Um, so as time goes on, you can improve it. And it, it really depends on whether you're working for yourself. But I think the fundamentals, if you're able to access, you know, uh, some form of budget from your team or um, things that you just want to focus on to start with, uh, having a really good desk, one that suits your needs, uh, standing desk, many people have. Um, I used to have this and I found it really good. Uh, and the lighting, uh, it's dark here, <laughs> but having a nice lamp next to you or having a nice, um, you know, overhanging lamp will help to improve your productivity. Um, there is some uh, studies about direct correlation between lighting and productivity. And also a good quality chair. Um, I picked out a quite nice one. Um, but at the same time, you don't have to spend the earth on a chair as long as it's, uh, you know, supportive. Um, it's a bit like buying a mattress. Sometimes you can uh, look around and find the one that is best supporting uh, your needs because you're going to be sitting on it. Uh, if you bought a standing desk, you, you don't have to buy the chair as well. So <laughs> that's a good news um, too. So that was about the workspace. And the workspace um, 
is a pretty key part of managing uh, yourself at home because that's the first point of call to go into your desk in the morning. Um, but the second thing is actually like um, like scheduling the day, actually planning it, actually coordinating it. And um, the schedule can be really important um, because you've got two new uh, things that have sort of hit you. You've got uh, potentially you may have had the removal of a whole commute, um, which for some people can give them back up to two hours in their day. Uh, But even if you had a 15 minute, 20 minute commute of walking, you've now got that back. Um, And also taking breaks and time out. You're not necessarily forced to um, in this environment, but you can and you can have easier access to it. So this actually became uh, quite popular with, um, you know, families, but also with professionals when they started working from home. And this was like a COVID-19 daily schedule that was put out there by, I believe it was a photographer. And they separated their day out into chunks, um, you know, waking up, morning walk, the academic time, the creative time, lunch. Um, And this, you know, this could be adapted. This could be, maybe you're not that much of a strict person, but for someone who is fairly new to working at home and want to make it a bit more effective, this could be a good starting point for you. So having a daily schedule is something that you could potentially have and whether it, it gets changed over a month, but having something like this that's written down could help you. The second element to that is having a schedule is potentially uh, introducing a a project management software um, or even a task management software. And we talk a lot about this in the Essential Productivity Training course on Go Skills about introducing a short list of some of the tasks you have during the day. And you don't have to use a tool. You could potentially use piece of paper next to you but it's a way to keep yourself calm focused on what needs to be done because you may not have that accountability that you had before that was existing in the office environment so also alluding to rules um, is to understand as well what it mentioned a minute ago is actually won't run perfectly uh, the first few months that I work from home I found it really tricky because um, I was trying to balance um, my wife coming in um, or my girlfriend at the time. And it was, um, you know, a little bit tricky because I was, she was walking past the kitchen, she had a conversation or, or someone was coming over and it would be the same environment because you're in that, you're sort of not trapped, but you're, you're there um, and you're trying to work, but you're also trying to take it uh, sort of day by day, but also try and keep yourself as professional as possible. Um, especially if you're working for a company, you want to make a good impression, um, especially if you want to make remote work uh, or working from home as long term as possible. So one of the best um, things that I did during that time was keeping a log of ways that you'd improve it. Um, for example, um, taking dedicated time out during the day um, to actually spend when you know that you and your partner is going to be uh, available. Um, and also being understanding that every day won't run as uh, expected. I even got that recently when we've had a new baby, um, that during that period of time, it's changed the way I work at home, definitely. And uh, I was beating myself up a bit at the start that I wasn't working enough, but truly it can change uh, and adapt as time goes on. So don't feel overwhelmed. Um, you know, reach out to other people as well that are in your line of work that are working from home because I'm sure reaching out to them will help. I I, I talked about this a moment ago, um, respecting work-life balance as much as you can because when you're at home, home feels like it becomes work and work feels like it becomes home. So balance is the key and balance is is sometimes hard because um, it's about immersion. Sometimes when you you do the act of traveling to a workplace, going in work, you sometimes feel a bit different because you're completely separating your environment. Whereas you wake up at home, you go upstairs or even in the same sort of level and move to uh, your station and start working. So you have to find ways to differentiate it to make it a little bit different. Uh, And I do that uh, 
best I can through, for example, in the mornings, um, I will have a regular breakfast. And then if I, if you are lucky to have a house with an upstairs or a separate room, going upstairs to then uh, actually um, go and start the day or setting a time that I will start. Um, and I try and do a, a workout or a box, I like boxing. So I work, I do some boxing at, at nine or 8.30. And then I do that for 15 minutes and then I go and start working because sort of like a nice start to the day and the same in the evening, I'll try and squeeze in a 15 minute run or a 10 minute run around block, but that can help me to one, get away from the devices and to differentiate the environment. So balance is key. And recently that's have been a very tricky situation with the little baby. Like sometimes it's not going to work out as you'd expect um definitely um that's something i've learned but at the same time uh situate you'll have peaks and flows of it um and as long as you set yourself some good rules and occasionally uh, you know you can do stuff like this of course snuggle with baby upstairs which is totally fine rules uh again we continue with this um and one of the biggest things about working from home is attire um i think it's still good to aim for an attire during the day um I've had very, very few days where I've actually <laughs> gone to work in um, my PJs. Actually, I would say probably I could count them on one hand because it's normally because I work for myself and <laughs> I uh, have probably been ill on that same day um, and have pulled myself into work. Um, but the aiming for an attire is still really uh, useful. So setting yourself out some work clothes, will help to make your working environment a bit better um i'm not necessarily saying shirt and tie um unless you're doing regular calls but try and pick something i try and wear a nice shirt with some jeans um and that helps me to separate it also they're developing a, a morning routine i put a picture of spider-man because there's a costume there um developing a morning routine is also a good way to start the day um Again, you don't have to have any of this. You could cherry pick some of it. But developing a morning routine is a good way to get the ball rolling. Um, and even if it's like myself, I get up, I do some stretches, I do some boxing, I make a tea, and I head upstairs, or I do try and throw a bit of journaling in there. Uh, but developing that, if you don't have one already and you're working at home, can be a good way to really, like, instead of making it, like, react um, to emails and things like that, make it more steady. Um, and then slow down. It's a good way to wind down and start up. So an aspect of your day that you may have um, introduced back um, into your life is the commute. Um, and whilst you could use it, and we do talk about this in a minute, to learn, to grow, to improve yourself, it's also a good time to relax. So you could introduce some form of meditation, there are some f smashing applications like balance, um, like oak meditation that are great for meditating. For yoga, there's ones like Asana Rebel. Um, the other one escapes me. I think it's called Down Doggy, Down Dog. Um, and exercise is a great way to really take back the commute time because it's 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 just bonus time if you manage to save a bit of time commuting. So utilize your time off. Um, even if it's just chilling or, you know, if you're feeling really tough or finding a bit stressful, watch a program um, that you want to start the day. Um, it's really up to you. Um, your day's your own. Um, I occasionally do some reading, um, which helps. Um, but a lot of the time at the moment, it's, it's feeding, <laughs> feeding and doing diapers. Um, and then going back to this, um, learning. So it could be podcasts, online courses like on Go Skills, uh, YouTube, you could be learning. And many people, as I said, could be gaining back 30 minutes back per day, which, you know, really does add up um, when you look at the, in the grand scheme of things. Over a week, that could account to a couple of hours. And you could have taught yourself something brand new in that period of time. I've got a picture of myself here from the old days, but that was me in the morning uh, doing a bit of reading. I don't know why I added that one. <laughs> um, the the other aspect of the commute um, that some 
teams may have been thinking about is that some managers may be saying or arguing, okay, so you have you were commuting before and you were doing may, maybe emails then, or you were maybe doing some work, or could you do some work for us? It's important to have a really good communication with your managers or speaking with your team that the commute is now yours and you should be able to utilize it. I think if a boss or a manager is forcing you to be able to use that commute time again, um, unless you're looking to, you know, c c advance your career development um, and want to go above and beyond um, on a certain project, your time should be, that commute time should be yours. So don't feel pressured um, or forced to give the back that commute time um, because it's really your time. So productivity levels. Um, again, this uh, this comes back to the 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 personal time and um, the concept of working in different uh, in places in your home. Now, occasionally you may find yourself on a sofa working on a laptop. Um, you may find yourself um, you know mixing two things at the same time. Um, but trying to associate um, the locations of your device can be very helpful. So, for example, keeping your laptop in only two places, on the dining table and at the desk um, as two workstations. So you can go downstairs occasionally, work down there, and work up here on your laptop. Um, trying to do that will help you to associate um, the device location. For example, if you're bringing your device to bed with you or you're deciding, I'm going to go work on the bed for a couple of hours, can sometimes affect things like your sleep. There's been correlations between association uh, of device location. Um, I've read a few pieces on it, and it's very interesting um, about how some people can, um, it can damage some people's sleep patterns. Um, and also retaining your own time, um, which is very important. Like I said before, it's not necessarily um, their time that you're gaining back from not commuting. Hey, Francesco. Yeah, hi. I just wanted right? to jump in. No, you're doing great. Um, on that on that note um, about device locations, I wanted to share just a personal thing too. Is that yeah, sure. you know? So I I have a standing desk for myself, and I've had one for for years. I really I really love it, and I love the you know the sensation of not sitting down for hours, but but being on my feet. And if you're going to do something like that, I highly recommend getting a, a, a mat that you can stand on. I can yeah. show you really quick, but it looks like this. It's nice and spongy and <laughs> it's great to, you know, protect your, your knees and your legs. But uh, as far as having those, those um, locations around the house where you can, you know, designate as a place where you can do some work, I found that I have a really comfortable chair in another room in our house where you know I love to sit and I'll bring my laptop and do some work. And so I just bought another charger that I keep right there plugged into the wall right next to that chair. And so it kind of encourages me to take a break from this desk, go over there, sit down, relax, you know, take a load off and maybe I'm there for a half hour, maybe an hour or or more, but at least I can do my work there charge you know charge my uh, computer i don't have to worry about rushing back or anything you know trying to create those relaxing uh locations within within your home uh it seems like a big benefit yeah yeah definitely um that's good advice like um you can uh for example like i'll go out in the garden um and work um and even i was i found a bench in the park one of those picnic benches that i I'm trying to pick an hour to do like two hours of writing on um, just because it, you know, it's a bit of a different situation to be in. Um, but if you had the luxury of a garden um, or the luxury of having an extra chair, that's a quite a handy way of doing it. So yeah, it's good advice. Like you, you can uh, blend the two uh, definitely like you blend a bit of uh, relaxation with uh, a bit of work, but it's, I guess it's, it's some of the more sort of, associative environments like a um like a bed um or working very late at night because that sometimes can you know 
Um, but it, the best way to do it is experiment, I think. Uh, you know, give it a go um, with different situations. I, and, and sometimes people will find that they'll do certain activities in different locations in the house, um, like down, the downstairs, uh, out in the park, I'll do writing. Um, upstairs I'll do editing and on the dining table I'll do emails um, so it's like you know you can play around with it a bit um, definitely absolutely and actually we saw just a couple comments if you don't mind speaking up a little bit if you can yeah I saw that too yeah I'll move slightly closer um, yeah I, I saw a couple of those um, thank sorry, you no, carry on I don't mean to interrupt go right ahead no no it's good so um, we've got a few slides left, actually. So um, the productivity level. So um, although I'm not the expert, and, and we were talking before with Dan about um, managing sort of working from home with kids and um, family, I've been doing a, a lot of sort of uh, research into uh, working from home with kids and um, uh, with uh, young ones because uh, I, I'm looking to plan for the future. <laughs> um, so uh, I think some of the bits of advice that I found uh, online were about communicating with your partner. Um, I found in a lot of situations, um, I saw a fantastic video uh, on uh, The Future, which is a YouTube channel. Um, I think it was Ben Burns, who is one of the designers there. He was talking about how he takes the children uh, for the first part of the day and his wife takes children for the second part of the day and they are both working and they'll do sort of shifts um, and they'll take it their opportunities to get their work done in those set periods of time it almost creating a schedule for you and your family um, and also setting boundaries and limitations um, I saw some really uh, cute examples online of um, uh, these parents that have taught their kids about um you know not interrupting um their their parents during work time um not like the bbc interview that went so uh famously uh wrong um, but also very funny um i saw a very cute example of um a a little daughter leaving um the dad had made this little uh sort of a port like a pigeonhole outside the door and wrote inbox on it and she would write him notes but also give him paintings during the day and leave them in there so that he could come out and check them and maybe come downstairs or or just check them at the end of the day but there's been some really like creative ways of doing it um and spending time with family but also setting those boundaries i think it will be interesting in 10 years when i get to that stage <laughs> or maybe less than that um but it's uh, a nice um sort of way I, i'm looking at a lot of different ways so managing your kids can be really hard especially when you're having to educate them at home too but uh trying to do those two things seems to be the the leading pieces of advice that i found and I think the final element um, of communication is meetings. Um, meetings are obviously a fundamental part of work. Uh, a lot of teams believe they should have meetings as part of their day. Um, but I think there's two things that come out of those um, that can be approved and something that you could probably relay to your team and your team can gain benefit from is the value of each meeting. Um, We've all been in meetings probably where we have realized, why did we do this meeting? Or was this meeting truly necessary? And I think we're working from home. Um, there's that added temptation for bosses and team members to be extremely um, keen on seeing every little piece of work that falls past. Um, and you can get team members who can naturally push for time tracking uh, or even tracking the software. Uh, there was a feature on Zoom recently um, called attendee tracking that I believe they removed now, uh, but it allowed to see whether a team member clicked away from the Zoom screen for past 30 seconds or it was 60 seconds. But that sort of technology can be quite intrusive to uh, a productivity workflow. So 
making sure that you understand the value of meetings, always asking whether that's even a meeting worthy and making sure that you set that precedent for you and your team. And the second part of that is to produce well outlined agendas because the faster you are on your meetings without being obviously rude and leaving. Um, I know in the UK, at least it's polite to, uh, you know, keep uh, the small, small talk in with everything. And I think it's a case uh, around the world. Um, but producing well outlined agendas can be a really important part um, of, of making sure those meetings go smoothly, but also unnecessarily long because that can, that can happen. <laughs> and especially at home, people do, uh, feel the need to. But also that point there, um, some teams have set up what's called water coolers inside of their their applications like Slack and uh, Twist and Teams, um, where they can open up video chat and have a indirect or general conversation with people without pressure of worrying, like you would have at a water cooler at work or when you'd have a little bit of a break. So you can, I've seen a lot of people uh, introduce those, especially the folks at Buffer. Um, they've been fairly good at that. So yeah, introducing these miniature sort of Zoom calls can be a good way. So I think that's um, the majority of the slide. I think I may have gone through it a little bit faster than I thought. <laughs> um, but um, I just want to thank everyone for attending. Um, and uh, there's also uh, some useful courses uh, Office, if you go to www.goskills.com slash office uh, hyphen productivity, um, you can get started there with uh, some exciting uh, courses there. And uh, hopefully there are a few, some few uh, questions. I think I'm seeing a few on the side. Um, yeah, I know that Trini had a, Trini had a great question, uh, yeah. which was how do we define the work schedule to employers who sometimes expect you to be available after those regular working hours. And I know that yeah. I think there, there are absolutely some job roles out there where, you know, that whether you're working from home or not, that flexibility is kind of built into it. Like if you're uh, part of a support team or uh, some kind of customer service role, you know, there may be, or, or a technical like IT kind of role where uh, you may be on call. Uh, it may be, you know, a, a 24 seven thing, or it could just be sort of, informal, which might be more difficult because you're unsure about when exactly you're going to get called. So um, what do you think about that, Francesco? Um, yes, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I read a really good book from um, Jason Freed called It Doesn't Have to Be Crazy at Work. Uh, and it touched on some really good concepts about like how you can, you know, communicate with your team about how uh work doesn't have to be this 24 hour thing but then then again there are situations like you said like the 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 it uh administration and things like that where they they do sometimes have to be um in these sort of environments where they need to be on call uh, but i think it's it's about sort of balance um i think the best way to start is probably setting some time aside uh to speak with your employer and just say, go through the rules of remote work and how you're going to do it um, and set aside uh, a good half an hour to go through over that um, and set an agenda as well, um, saying like, you know, this would be the best hours for me. It means that I'll be able to work more effectively for you. Uh, the quality of the work will be better and uh, I'll be less cranky <laughs> or tired. Um, and also... Um, setting up something that almost goes ignored sometimes is the tools uh is setting up these tools so that you can communicate uh, effectively um and even utilizing things like the, the the slack status um is something that teams are now looking to for not force but very much promote team uh employees at home to start using so um so that they understand when they're out what they're doing uh, or when not to disturb them, or when to disturb them. <laughs> it really is something where where managers and supervisors they they really need to communicate very clearly what their expectations are for availability and 
and for their reports for employees like you out there to know, you know, is there going to be some kind of call like uh, from out of nowhere uh, or, or a message or a Slack message or something where I'm going to have to jump on it at some, you know, out of office hour. Um, but, but Jason Freed's book is, is great. I, I, I'm paraphrasing a bit, but there is a great part in that where he says, you know, there's almost nothing that, that can't wait. If it's five o'clock uh, PM, uh, there's almost nothing that can't wait until nine o'clock the next morning. And if it's Friday afternoon, Friday at the end of the day, there's almost nothing that, that couldn't wait until next Monday. Yeah. And if you think of something over the weekend, just wait because not only do people not want to hear from you, but there's no reason to rush. You know, if you need to write it down, of course, if you have a great idea, go ahead and write it down or, you know, text it to yourself. But yeah, in, in most situations, there's almost nothing that couldn't wait so just let it wait and and give your you know give your team uh and your teammates a chance to enjoy their their off time without worrying about oh i just got a notification what does it mean should i look at it yeah you know? <laughs> it's it, yeah it's i think for managers it's like introducing respect for your employer uh, employee um i think it's i think it's something that people are starting to get more uh aware of but it's taking some time um and the other thing there as well is to uh the first thing you should do is try not to jump onto email in the morning because it puts you in that reactive environment to then respond and get carried away and then work starts before you've started <laughs> um so yeah trying to introduce yourself into some form of morning routine, even if it's just not checking your email for the first hour or two, depending on when you start there. I know one of the one of the strategies that I heard about, and I'm trying to remember now the it was a, a person who suggested it, but uh, it was time boxing, and it was so so yeah. building in kind of these set boxes of time within your daily schedule, so that you can you can kind of stick to exactly what you just said. That when you start your day, you're not thinking, oh, maybe I should jump into email and check that, but I know I have these other things to do. Well, maybe for the first hour, you are just doing email, and that's all you have to worry about. And so you you time box, and you say, well, from 9 to 10, I'm doing email. But I know from 10 to 12, I have this project work or whatever. 12 to 1, I do lunch. 1 to whatever, you know, I set aside for these other things. Yeah. But it, it helps you maintain a focus when you know that you're going to have distractions coming in from uh, anywhere, seemingly, but, but, you know, from different people who are trying to steal your time uh, mm -hmm. and attention. Uh, time boxing is one way that, um, that I've heard can be effective in that way. Yeah, and I think that's something that Elon Musk uses uh, to plan his time. So. You're in good company, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was speaking with Elon. He was definitely. Yeah. He was telling me. <laughs> you just got off the call with him. Didn't you? <laughs> Sorry, I was talking to him before this uh, webinar. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> this is another question that came up. Uh, if you are getting the okay to go back to the office, but you want to keep working from home, how do you start that conversation with your boss? Yeah, this is, uh, I think, something that's really important because if you've see that if you've say spent a bit of time at home and maybe a month or month and a half two months in and you're actually going wow like the commute's back i'm being doubly productive um and i get time to see family and friends well not in this situation <laughs> i get to see you know people that uh, i can go on walks socially distance walks with <laughs> um then you see that benefit i think you have to approach it um as if you're approaching some form of negotiation um, with your boss. So the best way to do that is to draw up a proposal um, with them. And it could be in a di digital document format, uh, or it could be just by setting aside 30 minutes to talk. Um, and the best way to go into this is to present the facts to start out with. I have done X, I've done Y, and... Uh, you may have seen that I've been able to take on more duties with less time. Um, and then number two is to 
ask them for an extension to what you're already doing now um, and for them to monitor that. So, for example, you could say, um, here's what I've done over the last couple of months. Um, you may have seen 2x improvement in this. And I also feel a lot better about um, uh, the work uh, that I'm doing. And I feel like uh, we're going to be successful in the next six months and I'm going to hit all my targets. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, bring as many facts as you can. And then be just saying, I'd like to extend the way that we're working now just by one extra month. Um, and I'd like to then organize a meeting to review that. And then when you get to that meeting, you can actually, um, you know, you can sit down and you can say, right, this is what I've done in that month. And I'd like to continue this forward. And you should hold your boss accountable to that first call. Because if they, if you were to say, and if I am this successful, I hit all these targets by next month, um, am I able to work from home uh, further than this month? So that you should set some sort of boundary for after. So um, this is something that I, I've seen a couple of people do. Uh, the, the experimental work from home. And it's actually sort of like a bit of a tease for your boss um, because they think they're they're just trialing an experiment, whereas in reality, they're probably going to get, um, you know, you working from home for a long period of time um, because, it, because they'll get an understanding that you don't really need to be there necessarily um, unless your job demands it, of course. I think it can be quite uh, quite motivating that is, if the, as, as the question was, you want to keep working from home, um, how can you continue that? How can you keep up that, that um, you know, working uh, situation? So if you are working from home, I would think you would be really motivated to get, you know, that extra, go the extra mile and, and meet all those milestones um, yeah. cause in, in my experience that when supervisors are, uh, faced with, uh, changing the status quo and changing the process by which work gets done, um, it, it's, you know, uh, if, when they're presented with data and evidence that shows that, you know, something could be changed for the better, they will go, they'll be more willing to go for it. I should say <laughs> some, <laughs> some, some, some managers are, they need a lot more, uh, pushing to do it. But um, uh, in a situation like this, you know, many of us have had no choice but to be pushed into new situations like this. And so if you can demonstrate um, with some kind of evidence and some data and show that um, you've been more productive or you've been able to produce more, I mean, that kind of thing right there, that hard data is is hard to argue with. Yeah, it is definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I think facts and even, even um, bringing up uh, useful insights about working from home from leading sites, um, from studies that are happening always helps um, as additional to your, your workload that's improved. Yeah. Well, I want to remind everyone that if you have any questions, you can jump into chat and uh, we'll get it over to Francesco immediately. But um, just a couple of plugs real quick. If you want to learn more about what Francesco is doing with with your pro with your podcast, keepproductive.com, what do you do on your your podcast? You you do product reviews and you look for different tools, right? Yeah, so we spend uh, the majority of time uh, doing YouTube videos these days about um, different types of software. So um, we review different softwares like Notion, like Evernote, like email apps, like to do list apps. And then we try and help recommend the best ones to you. Um, and uh, yeah, it helps narrow down your search and finding tools that uh, could help you to be more productive across your day. So I wanna put you on the spot then. So if you've been reviewing these apps and reviewing these tools, given our situation that we've had where so many people have had to work from home and, and it's been a new thing for them, what, are, what would you say are the top three tools or the three first tools that you would recommend to the average remote worker out there as something that could potentially help them work effectively, work more effectively? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. Um, the first thing I'd recommend is 
probably for somebody that uh, needs a bit of clarity as they start their day. Um, an application called Todoist is really good. Um, it is a, a to-do list application. It's really simple. It's really well designed. And what you can do on it is you can start planning your week with tasks. It's that simple. Uh, you can create projects. Um, but primarily, it's a way for you just to set out your goals for the day. You can prioritize tasks from high priority to low priority. And you can open it every morning knowing what you're going to do for the day ahead. Um, and that's more for yourself than it is for your team. Um, the second tool I'd recommend is an application called Twist. Um, a lot of teams go for Slack and Microsoft Teams because it's included in their application. But there's a really nifty app called Twist. It's from the same company makes Todoist, actually. Um, but to twist.com is another one. It, it, it's basically instead of starting um, your conversations in channels, you start your conversations in things called threads. Um, so, for example, if you were getting a certain activity done, you'd start a thread on that activity instead of starting just a general chat so that all of your conversations are tailored towards completing that task versus just, you know, sort of random conversations and you catching up on that. So that's one I always um, always recommend uh, to teams that are looking uh, to get started. Um, trying to think of a, a third one. Um, the one I always tend to recommend these days, especially for teams that are um, new to being remote, um, is the fact that when you're in even Slack and Teams, you silo information. You like you could even have things like the color codes for your website. Uh, you could have images. You could have um, conversations that matter. You could have onboarding guides all stuck within your chat app. And you're like, oh, my God, it's there. Uh, and that's sometimes not so good. So there's an app called Notion that's quite popular at the mo moment, um, Notion.com. And uh, it helps you to wiki your information. Um, so basically, uh, what you can do there is you can start making these guides um, and resources. Uh, where you and your team can start working on them. And it's got some great features like on screen, like you can even start a to-do list, you can start a, a, a roadmap. But as you can see there, you can see, you can add your company goals, your company uh, notes, uh, meeting notes, everything can be hosted in one area, um, which is nice because especially when you're trying to train a new employee, they can just go to the, their own like intranet and uh, find out all they need to know. Those are great recommendations. Those look those look really good. Um, well, let's let's see here. Uh, well, we have uh, no other questions at the moment. So here's what I wanted to do to at least give everyone the option of connecting with you after the fact. After this is over, um, you can go to keepproductive.com and check out Francesco's podcast and all the reviews that they do and see their recommendations. But also, you can find them on Twitter at Francesco D underscore Aless. So you can look at that very specifically there. You can find him right there. Um, so I want to I want to thank everyone for attending today's webinar. Uh, there, there are so many, um, so many good tips in, in here. And, and, um, you know, it, I think it, I think it gives us all something to think about, especially given that, you know, for the past few months, um, you know, we've been trying to remain productive uh, under strange circumstances, under stressful circumstances. And, you know, whether you've got kids at home or not, or whether you're home alone or, or not, and, you know, in a home or an apartment or wherever, um, trying to remain productive with, you know, this new situation is something that I think reveals new opportunities. Um, it, it could be something where you may want to continue this into the future. And now you have some advice on how to approach your boss and, and how to improve your workspace at home to, to get even more out of your day and capture back some of that time. Uh, so I think these tips are, are really great. I want to thank our speaker again, Francesco D'Alessio. Uh, again, you can find him on Twitter at Francesco D underscore less. 
or visit keepproductive.com. Francesco, thank you so much. Thank you, Dan. It's been a pleasure. All right. Thanks, everyone, for watching this webinar. You can get a replay of this on our YouTube channel at uh, goskills.com is our channel on YouTube or visit us at goskills.com and take some courses and learn a whole lot more. So thanks for watching. Bye, everyone.